There are many different opinions when it comes to dividend investing, and it might take some thinking to determine what the most convenient and profitable approach is. An investor could purchase individual dividend stocks, dividend ETFs, or a combination of both. As with many types of investing, there's a strategy to suit the style and goals of nearly anyone, but one thing we all have in common is to make money. Whether it's simply to prepare for a comfortable retirement or to quit working in your 30s to pursue other goals, passive income is something we all enjoy and dividends are a fantastic way to achieve that. Are you better off purchasing individual stocks in hopes of beating the market, or is your time best spent doing something else? Some investors choose to buy only ETFs or exchange-traded funds to build their dividend income, while others choose to only buy individual stocks, such as 3M, Clorox, and Coca-Cola, that they feel will outperform. Which strategy has the potential to make you the most money so you can reach your financial goals sooner? Which is better for your schedule and personal preferences? Are you better off putting your entire retirement into one dividend-paying stock that you think is going to provide exponential returns? Or buy a fund that has a history of slow and steady returns with stable dividend payments? My name is Chris, and I'm here to teach people about money, personal finance, and investing. If you're interested in improving your financial future, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if this video is helpful. Stocks are shares of publicly held companies. When you buy a stock of a company, like Walmart or Bank of America, for example, you're purchasing a small slice of that business. The price of an individual stock will vary based on multiple factors, such as earning reports, debt, and the general economy. Dividend-paying stocks distribute a portion of their earnings to shareholders in an amount that is determined by the board of directors. An exchange-traded fund, or ETF, is simply a basket of stocks. So instead of purchasing one individual company, you're buying a whole group at once. There are many different categories of funds. An ETF might follow a specific industry or sector, buying only those assets. You can buy a high-dividend ETF, an S&P 500 ETF, energy ETF, or real estate ETF. You can buy funds that only own in a particular country, industry, currency, or own only bonds. ETFs are just like stocks and can be purchased with brokerages like Robinhood. ETFs do have an expense associated with owning, other than the commission that some brokerages charge when buying or selling. The fee charge is called an expense ratio, and it's charged on an annual basis. Expense ratios vary dramatically depending on the company whose fund you buy, such as Vanguard, Fidelity, Invesco, and so on. But the average expense ratio is about 0.4%. Individual stocks have no expense ratio, and they are completely free to own. When only comparing the fact that ETFs charge an expense ratio and stocks don't, that can make a significant difference in your portfolio over time. Consider that a portfolio of $1 million invested in a fund with an expense ratio of 0.4% is charged $4,000 per year, or $333 per month. That's a large amount, especially when compared to the contributions that are made to that account. For someone earning $50,000 per year who saves 15% of their income, that's $625 per month. That expense of $333 per month is over half of their entire contribution. This is why you hear so many financial experts advocating to invest in the lowest cost funds possible. Volatility and risk are the biggest factors to consider when determining how to best allocate your portfolio. Risk and reward tend to go hand in hand when investing. Buying individual stocks is a more hands-on approach for those willing to take on a little more risk and take the time to research companies. Debt, income, and many financial aspects should be considered, as well as what's in store for the future of the company. You could purchase shares of a reputable company, such as Johnson & Johnson, and receive a dividend yield of around 3%. But with that comes the headaches and upward potential associated with the business. For example, Johnson & Johnson has a long list of lawsuits that has been hindering the growth of its stock price. But if those were somehow dismissed, or they release a groundbreaking product, the returns could be incredible. The volatility associated with individual stocks can be both a blessing and a curse. These price swings can be excellent for investors who have the initiative to purchase when stocks are on sale, allowing them to get a much better price than someone who buys at random. However, this volatility can be dangerous to the health of your portfolio. 
If you have a large percentage of your account invested in one stock and something drastic happens, you could be in trouble. This could be the loss of a CEO, lawsuits, or new competition. You must be aware of the company's future at all times. When you purchase ETFs, you don't have the extreme potential that you do with individual stocks. However, the prices are more stable and aren't likely to be hugely impacted when one or two companies runs into trouble. On the other hand, if one company is performing extremely well, it won't really affect the fund. Additionally, the likelihood of a fund slashing its dividend payments is highly unlikely. Relying on the dividend payments of one company can be risky. If the business runs into any financial trouble, the dividend could be cut by 50% or more. This could be detrimental to retirees relying on that income. Opportunities for purchasing individual stocks at a discount are much more frequent due to their volatile nature. The average stock price fluctuates over 50% over the course of one year. To put this into perspective, if you purchase $10,000 of Apple stock, within a year you could expect the price to drop to $7,500 and rise to $12,500 and vice versa. There are many different reasons that a stock will vary wildly, including buying behavior of institutional investors, changes in management and company sentiment, political changes, and so much more. The entire stock market fluctuates much less, typically around 25% over the course of one year. This is because each stock held within the index fluctuates independently, for the most part. Individual stocks and ETFs both have excellent potential in terms of returns. We've all heard of that one person who bought shares in the early stages of a company out of speculation and ended up striking it big. That one investment made them a ridiculous return. As rare as something like this is, the likelihood of striking gold with one company is possible, but not so much with a fund. In other words, if you purchase a fund of 100 or so companies, it's unlikely that the average return is going to end up making you rich overnight. To be fair, this is also unlikely with one company, but it is possible. By purchasing an S&P 500 or total stock market fund, you could expect to receive about a 10% return each year, on average. There is little control offered with any type of fund, including mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs. This means that if you don't like a particular company held within the fund, that's too bad. If one of the stocks held has very poor future prospects, there is no option to sell it and remove it from your holdings. For example, Vanguard's High Dividend Yield Fund, VYM, has financial service stocks as its largest allocation, which has historically provided high dividend yields. If an investor believes the financial service stocks are going to perform poorly in the future, that entire fund might not align with their portfolio. Also, if you spot trouble in one company held within the fund, there's no option to sell that one stock. Why does this matter? Because the stock market is inefficient, meaning some stocks are undervalued while others are overvalued. When purchasing funds, it's more difficult to pick up values. This can still be done by purchasing undervalued sectors, but sale opportunities for an entire sector are much less frequent. Growth tends to be more linear, which is great for people investing the same amount every month, but not so great for those who enjoy buying the dips. ETFs can be surprisingly diverse, and can be chosen based on your risk tolerance. Investors who are happy to take on more risk in hopes of higher returns can purchase ETFs of specific sectors. Bank stocks have been inexpensive with high dividends ever since they were beaten down during the Great Recession. So if an investor believes they're going to make a big comeback in the future, they could buy a fund such as Vanguard's financial ETF. Tobacco ETFs are also an option for those seeking a high yield. However, one must consider what the future will look like for this sector. Most commonly purchased are ETFs that track benchmarks, such as the S&P 500, the total stock market, or the Dow. These are some of the most stable, well-rounded funds that provide instant diversification. For investors looking for the easiest form of passive income, dividend ETFs that hold the entire market are the best choice. These funds are some of the most fail-proof investing methods that are sure to provide passive income with a set-it-and-forget-it approach. There's no need to constantly reassess the situation of each company, which is what would be required to make informed investments with individual stocks. Owning only individual stocks isn't a smart idea for most people. If you're the type of investor who enjoys selecting investments by doing extensive research, 
it would be wise to keep the majority of your portfolio in broad market funds, with just a portion investing in individual companies and a small portion in individual sectors, such as energy, real estate, or healthcare. For example, 80% of your portfolio could be in broad market funds, and 20% could be spread among individual stocks and individual sectors. It's also important for investors to be more conservative as they age and near retirement. This might mean owning only broad market funds and possibly a percentage of bonds. There are virtually unlimited ways to structure a portfolio, which is why it's important to be educated on the matter. This will allow investors to make intelligent decisions based on their needs, goals, and preferences. With that said, there is no best strategy or one that works best for everyone, but you're sure to find one for you.